In today's tutorial, I'll show you how to use Google's new AI tool called Whisk. It's a powerful way to explore new styles and take more control over editing your images. So let's get started. The main idea behind Whisk is merging multiple images into one final result. It's not about making just a single picture. It's about combining different inputs and styles into a cohesive output. If you don't have your own images to start with, you can let Whisk generate one for you as a base. Once the image is ready, we'll dive in and see how to refine and adjust it, and why this tool is such a strong option for creating unique results. Here's the first generated image. Now from here, most of the editing happens in the side panel, which is where we'll do the real work to shape the final output. Merging styles. So now we've got two images to work with, and some of them already look really good. For this example, I'm going to use the photo of the woman as the subject image. Whisk will then analyze her and set her as the main focus of our project. Subject focus. The next step is to generate a scene. A scene is basically the environment or location where our subject will appear. You can upload your own image or simply type in a quick prompt. For this demo, I'll generate one randomly so you can see how it works. Here we go. The scene has been created. And honestly, it looks great so far. At first glance, it seems like some kind of fantasy setting, maybe even a tennis court. Looking closer, it's actually a magical overgrown city with a tennis court placed right in the middle. A really creative mix. Scene creation. Since we've placed the character inside the scene, we can also start adding more details. I'll show you that part later so you can see how prompts affect the output. But for now, the next step is choosing the final style that will decide how the whole image looks. Style control. At this point, we have three main elements, the subject, the scene, and the style. The style is what ties everything together. It won't change who the subject is or where they're placed. It simply changes the overall look and feel of the image. For example, one option gave me a vintage anime style, which looks really nice. And that's the fun part. Even if you don't know many art styles yourself, Trying different ones can give you inspiration and sometimes results you wouldn't have expected. So now I'll merge everything together. With the subject, the scene, and the style combined, Whisk generates a final image. Final merge. Here's the result. You can see the woman as the subject, the background of the magical tennis court, and everything presented in an anime style. That's the basic process of how it works. Of course, there are a lot of smaller features and details you can experiment with, and those make the tool even more exciting to explore. Aspect ratios. One really cool feature is how quickly you can change the aspect ratio. This is super useful if you're planning to share your image on different social media platforms. For example, portrait works really well for online stories, while square or landscape might be better for other platforms. Adjusting the aspect ratio makes your image look more polished and better suited for wherever you wanna post it. It's a simple option, but it makes a big difference in how effective your final output looks across different formats. Style rolling. For this video, I'll keep most of my examples in landscape, but you can easily test how different styles affect your project. By trying different styles, you almost build a little style board of ideas to compare. For example, one style I tried gave me a sticker effect. Only one style can be active at a time. And in this case, the sticker version didn't quite work probably because the background was a bit too complex. Switching to another style, though, gave me exactly what I wanted. One of the nicer results was a paper cut style, which looked very creative and effective. It's definitely one I'd save to use again. Exploring different styles like this really helps you discover unique looks for your images. Custom uploads. If there's a style that doesn't fit what you're creating, you can always remove it and move on. The good news is, Whisk also supports custom image uploads, which opens up even more possibilities. For example, I tried generating an image in a 1960s grainy film aesthetic, and the result came out looking really cool. On top of that, you can move objects around within the scene. Let's say I wanted to replace the woman with a dinosaur. Whisk can generate that change and place the dinosaur right in the same location and style. This flexibility is great, but one small drawback right now is that Whisk doesn't always keep characters fully consistent across different images. Sometimes little details change between generations. 
It's not a huge issue, but it's something I hope improves in the future. Next, I'll show you an example of what I mean. Prompt tweaks. To show you this better, I'll clear everything and upload my own images. First, I'll upload a picture of a red car. Then I'll add a background image, a jungle racetrack. Once both are uploaded, Whisk starts analyzing them and generates a prompt. From what I can see, Whisk doesn't fully capture the exact details of the uploaded image. Instead, it mostly transfers the idea into a prompt and builds the output from that. For the style, I'll choose the paper cut look. When I generate the result, the car appears on the racetrack, but it's not an exact match for my original car. That's why being specific with prompts is so important. Instead of simply typing red sports car, I'll enter the exact details. Red 911 GT2 RS with a black stripe. After saving that and regenerating, the results are much closer. You can clearly see that adding precise details improves the outcome. The main lesson here is that if you're struggling with character or object consistency, always try to be as detailed as possible. Include product names, model numbers, or any specifics you can. Whisk isn't copying the exact image. It's interpreting it through prompts. So the clearer you are, the better the consistency. Animating images. Another feature Whisk offers is the ability to animate your creations. At the moment, this is powered by version 2 of their video model. The animation works, but the quality isn't perfect, especially when it comes to moving objects or complex actions. For this example, I kept it simple. The car stays parked while the camera pans around it in a cinematic way. And honestly, it looks great. The motion feels smooth and consistent, even if it's not advanced animation. Motion tips. When I tried another prompt, car drives down the road and exits the scene, I was surprised at how well it turned out. Usually this version of the tool struggles with more complex movements, but in this case, it followed the prompt nicely. That said, the focus of this tool right now isn't to create high-end, fully animated videos. It's more about adding simple motion to bring your generated images to life. Used in that way, it's a solid feature and definitely worth experimenting with. Project sharing. You can add small animations here and there, and from Google's own demos, most of the clips are simple. Things like text, mascots, or quick effects. It's not groundbreaking, but it does show what's possible when you start combining environments, styles, and prompts in creative ways. You can also download your clips and compile them into a full project if you want. Google even provides some presets like plush toys or capsule figures. The selection is limited, but it's a handy way to get started. The real strength of Whisk comes from experimenting. Whenever you create a subject, it's always better to pair it with a proper background and an art style. For example, generating a plain white figurine doesn't look nearly as good as placing it in a scene with a matching style. Another great feature is sharing. If you've created something unique, like a car designed in a specific art style, you can share your Whisk recipe with others. That way, they can open it, swap in their own subject, and instantly get the same effect. Google even showed this off by encouraging users to make their own Android I.O. bots from shared recipes. When someone opens your link, they'll see the subject, the style, and the setup. From there, it's as simple as replacing the subject with their own, like a profile photo, and Whisk applies the same style automatically. Here's a quick tip. Always try to use subjects with a white background. This makes it easier for Whisk to identify the subject cleanly and prevents messy results. Overall, this makes it fun to experiment Share your work and create scenes, avatars, or even trend-based edits that others can join in on. So that's the full rundown of Google Whisk, how to merge prompts, control styles, upload your own images, animate results, and even share your projects with others. It's still a work in progress, but it opens up a lot of creative possibilities. If this walkthrough helped, let me know in the comments what you'd like me to cover next. Would you prefer a deep dive into animation controls or maybe a step-by-step -step guide for building stronger style prompts.